Hey there everyone, welcome to the IT Pro TV YouTube channel and today we're going to take a look at SSRF if you're interested in that. Well, stick around. Hey there everybody, I'm Daniel Lowry from IT Pro TV and today we're going to look at server side request forgeries or SSRF as the kids like to call it nowadays. If we take a look at my computer, it'll learn us a little bit more about that. I've got the OWASP Top 10 for 2021, which has recently been released and has some new additions. One of them is SSRF. You can see that down here on the screen. There it is, number 10 with the bullets, right? Interesting little a fun thing that we can utilize. And I thought, hey, let me show you how that works, kind of give you an example of that. And it is something that we go over in the Pentest Plus series available from IT Pro TV. So if you're interested in learning more about the details on how this works, you definitely want to check that series out. So that being said, let's jump over to this thing and see how it works. I've got my web page up that has an SSRF vulnerability that we are going to manipulate and bend and play with. And all it does really easily is it changes the language. Okay, I've got a couple of languages. I can choose English, I can choose French or something from the Netherlands. I don't exactly know what they speak, but I'm sure it is uh, elegant and beautiful. But I'm gonna choose English because that's what I speak. I'm gonna hit go. And we can see that, thank you for your interest in BWAP, but that's only where the story begins. Story ends with, I have also been capturing information using a product called Burp Suite. And I can see that that request showed up right here. From there, I'm gonna right click on this and send that to my repeater because I wanna manipulate this. I wanna change some of the variables. I wanna work with it a little bit and see if I can't make it do some stuff that it wasn't intended to do. So with that being done, I should be able to go to the repeater, wherever that's hiding, there it is. And I can see there is my web request. Now I can modify any of these parameters that I like. Now I've got one in mind here, and this one says language equals, and it gives me a PHP page. Okay, excellent. Well, I'm gonna change that. What I wanna do is I can do a couple of things with SSRF. I can scan internally for like open ports, or I can read files with them as well. You can probably make it do a little bit more, but those are the two main functions that people utilize SSS, SSRF for. So let's see if we can do one of those or maybe both of those things. Let's start off with scanning for an open port. Let's see if port 22 is open and available for us. So I'm gonna do HTTP colon, just like a normal thing, but I'm gonna give it the local host adapter, 127.0.0.1, and then a colon and then the port I want it to scan for, which is port 22. If I hit send, it comes back, gives me a 200 okay. And I just kind of start looking through the response code that I received and see if I find anything that looks like it might be a response from an open port. As I scroll through here, I can see I'm just kind of getting through the uh, title page and everything. And I can see there's SSRF, there's my other stuff. And then right here, it does say warning. What's going on here? It does say HTTP request failed. But then I get this, SSH 2.0, open SSH 4.7 P1. I got the banner to the open port for an SSH server. So now I have enumerated that it is using SSH, the port is open and it does respond. So if I wanted to see if that was happening and maybe it's only internally available, I now know that that is open. Maybe I could do something else with it. That's really cool, but we can also read files. Like I said, let's try that. Go over here, we'll change our field one more time. We'll change this to file, colon, forward slash, forward slash. And then you give it the path of the file you wish to read. And a lot of times, a great testing is going to be the slash Etsy slash password file, P-A-S-S-W-D. If it's a Unix machine, that's a great file to go for. It's usually universally readable. So if, if this does work, I should be able to read that file. And not only that, I'll see all the users that are available on the system. So I hit send, I got a 200. It doesn't look like it's upset about anything for me. Oh, and there is a list of the Etsy password file from that machine. I do see that we have a root user. We've got a www data user, which is the website uh, defaults. We also have B, we have Neo, we have Alice, a few others, Thor, Wolverine, Johnny, and Celine. Hey, I'm enumerating users all day long, that's great. And maybe I can leverage this to even further exploit the system. But that's the basics of SSRF. I'm having the system, the remote system, run commands for me when it wasn't really meant to do that. 
So a really cool thing, and I can see why it made uh, on the OWASP Top 10. And if that's an interesting type of thing you're looking for, if you like pen testing, ethical hacking, you want to learn more about that, you should join us for our Pentest Plus series on IT Pro TV. That said, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell for all the great content coming out of the IT Pro TV YouTube site. That said, I'm going to take it off and we'll see you next time.